Hello everyone, we're live. It's me, Phil, in the Digital DJ Tips studio with another Thursday Q&A live. This is all about you. This is all about helping you with your DJing and your DJ producing. So if you've got questions, if you've got challenges, if you've got things that are making DJing just a bit of a struggle for you right now, could be gear questions, could be something to do with your music, could be to do with techniques, could be to do with promoting yourself, going live, playing live streams, getting gigs. We're here to help. We're the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the number one best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. We're also the people behind the Digital DJ Tips website, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. Also the Mixcloud Live Twitch and other channels that you could be watching this on. I lose count because there are so many of them. And we are thrilled to do this for you every Tuesday. It's not our only live show. We do a uh, sorry, every Thursday, we do a Tuesday show as well, that's what I meant to say, which is uh, kind of like more about a particular topic in DJing. So join us at the same time on Tuesdays if you want to hear uh, about kind of what's going on in DJing. Actually, this Tuesday, we were looking at the gear that I've got set up here, or specifically the controller you see on the left there, the new Denon DJ LC 600, which we've written a review about on the website. So if you're interested in that and what it's all about, sorry, 6,000, uh, and what, what it's all about, go and have a look on the website. Uh, and we're also live on Sundays, uh, and it's me this week, and I don't know where we're going to be, uh, because we're going to head off in the camper van and uh, explore, because we're finally allowed to, uh, to, to go a bit further than uh, in the next town. Um, with the COVID restrictions here lifting a bit. So uh, so I'm going to take my portable gear and be, be doing a live stream from who knows where. Uh, we do that every Sunday. They're not always from weird and wonderful places, but we do that every Sunday. So um, an hour from now, look at your watch, an hour from now on Sunday, come and join me everywhere apart from Facebook. We can't do it on Facebook for the copyright uh, police reasons, but we're on Twitch and Mixcloud Live and uh, YouTube on uh, on Sunday. So um, yeah, come and join me there. But we've also got Ben and Steve doing those shows as well. Right, that's enough about us. If you are watching the recording, I always have to say it because people always are. If you're watching the recording, you should have been watching us live. And the way you can do that is by subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell icon. And then we can let you know when we go live. But also if you're watching the recording on Facebook, uh, you need to like the page and then you need to click the little thing that says show posts first from this page, which will allow us again to tell you when we go live. And that's when you can ask questions. And I can see lots and lots of people asking questions already in the comments here, which is amazing. Uh, so welcome everyone. I'm Phil Morse. It's a pleasure to be here for the next hour or so. Let's talk DJing. Right, a few early hellos. Hello to uh, our usual regulars at the beginning. I wouldn't be able to do it without you folks. To Miss Master, Mix Master G, Mr. Dave C, uh, to Sean, to Wingsome Mock, to uh, Dat Boy, who's glad to be watching us live again. Uh, having not been able to recently. Uh, hello to Gerald over there in North Las Vegas. Uh, hello to Carmelo uh, in the UK and Loris and Modish Mark and Jason uh, and everyone else saying hello in the chat. It's always good to have you here and uh, it's always humbling to see so many of you so, uh, so quickly. It's like you're hovering over those buttons to say hello. So uh, my first question is from uh, Jason who says, Hi Phil, uh, can you do live streams through an iPhone? Uh, and any advice with that, please? Well, yes, you can. My phone, I think, is in my pocket. I might be wrong about that. Yeah, I am wrong about that. But you can do it easily through an iPhone, and I'll show you how. So there's a little app you need for your phone, uh, which is called Larix Broadcaster. Uh, and I'm going to dial it up now and show it to you. Whoops. So I saw the icon there, and then I tapped something else, as we all want to do. Uh, so this is Larix Broadcaster. So you can see what you're getting there is a, a, a live button. You can see the microphone as well and you can see what it's pointing at, me. So uh, this little app is really cool because in the app you can put in uh, what's called an RTMP key uh, and a, or an RTMP server address and a stream key. So that's uh, what you will get from Twitch or from YouTube or from Facebook Live, indeed anywhere at all where you can go live. Uh, you will put those things into this piece of software and uh, they look like that. You probably can't, I, I, let's try and get the camera to dim down, there you go. The, there you go, oh look at that, that's good. Uh, that's our private key, so if you're really quick, you could go live on our Mixcloud channel with that. Um, nah, it's only half of our private key. Um, so you put those things into this little program, Larix Broadcaster, and uh, you go live, that's it, it's simple. Uh, you do need to get good audio into your phone, and there's lots of ways of doing that. Um, if you're interested in this, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website because we've got lots and lots of stuff on this. You can search um, uh, live stream audio, 
and one of the first things that comes up will be ways to get great sounding audio on your live streams and in this article I talk you through how to plug in to your phone uh, and uh, the different ways that you can do it. Uh, so uh, take a look at that because uh, that, will, that will give you the advice you need. You know, if you get the audio right, people will forgive the video and stuff. But still, with these phones, you can get really, really good quality. Stick it on a little tripod. You can get tripods that have got uh, little stands. And again, mine's not quite within reach. But you can get tripods quite cheap with a little clip that goes on your phone and holds your phone like that. So you can point it down at your DJ gear. So with the audio plugged in so that it sounds nice and with the phone steady, as long as you then light your DJ gear quite well, you look pretty good. And you can get an angle, you know, there's a classic angle where there's you and your gear in. Um, look, I could talk to you for literally probably weeks about live streaming. It's something that we do as a company. I talk, told you at the beginning that everyone in all, all the DJs and digital DJ tips kind of rotate and play DJ sets in that Sunday slot. Um, but it's also something that we've, you know, I'm doing a live stream now. We've, we've made so many mistakes over the years with our live streaming, spent so much money we didn't have to spend, uh, and basically, um, you know, made a lot of the, the mess ups that uh, we don't want you to make. So we put all of that stuff into a course as well. So uh, on our courses page at the top of the website there, uh, you can find the DJ Live Stream You Made Easy course. Uh, and this is, uh, this is going to explain to you everything you need to know uh, if you want to get serious about doing this, not only with your phone, of course, but with, uh, with laptops and uh, building a proper studio like the one that I'm talking to you from now. Uh, and you can get really crazy with live stream stuff. This studio has got a front view. There's our kind of famous front view. Uh, it's got the, the close-up camera. It's got the over-the-shoulder camera there. It's even got an overhead camera that I've uh, hijacked the, uh, the camera from for something else right now, so I can't show you that one. Uh, we can broadcast live from the computer that I've got here. We've got all the audio running into it. You can go to town on your live streaming studios, uh, and that's all explained in there as well, how to do it. So if you're interested, have a look at that course. It's called DJ Live Streaming Made Easy. Thanks for the question, Jason. Uh, right, I feel like we're warmed up now. We're ready to go. We're, uh, we're, we're started. I always like to get the first question done. Um, so this is from Jermaine, and this is a music question. Jermaine says, hi, Phil. Is it okay to play the full song sometimes in DJ sets? Uh, and, and also, who sings that Lover Man set you had in one of your balcony beats? Right, okay, let's answer both of those questions for you. So the first question is, yes, it's always okay to play the whole song. Depends on who you're playing to, depends on the kind of music you're playing, depends on the style, depends upon the uh, time of night. Um, you know, DJing is moving more increasingly towards the quick mixing style, right? Where you're in and out of stuff, and it's not even track after track after track. It's more... Um, bit of this, bit of that, you know, a bit of cleverness going on. And it is definitely worth having those skills, but that doesn't mean that it's not right to just play the whole track. There's a lot of DJs that will, and a lot of people who want to hear the whole tracks in DJ sets. You know, the way a lot of dance music is made is it repeats in the middle, right? You get to the middle of the track and the, the same thing again happens. Uh, and it's okay to get rid of the track at that point. I think most people would agree that that is, that is all right. It's just a case of getting it right and, and gauging how much the dance floor is enjoying what you're playing. Uh, the general rule is the quicker mixing brings a higher energy to the dance floor. So this is more peak time kind of thing. But it would be a little bit crazy if you were mixing like 40 tunes an hour at, you know, the first half hour of a club opening, right? It's just not really necessary, not really uh, the right thing to do at that stage. So it all depends on context. context. But yes, it is um, completely fine. To, uh, to do that. Uh, and as to the track I played that sampled um, uh, Mr. Loverman, uh, I think it was by DJ Peter. I'm gonna check for you now. Uh, I'm gonna check for you on my, uh, on my list of the tracks that I, play, uh, I played on recent, uh, on recent Digital DJ Tips live streams and let you know instantly what it is. Uh, it is, let's scroll down together and find out. Peter Palace, Loverman. The catchy riff from the old Shabba Ranks hit. Uh, so there you go, Peter Palace, Love A Man is the track that you want. Uh, so always a pleasure to help, Jermaine. Uh, hello to the Ruckus. Uh, hello to DJ Kluby and Driver John. Uh, DJ Fubar, I've got a question about the LC6000 Prime, which is the, uh, the unit you can see to the left of the picture there. I'm having a hard time figuring out how this product will be anything other than an addition product. Is this its only function? You would never buy two of these with a mixer when the DDJ-1000 is only uh, 1200. Right, good question. So let's get one of these. I'm gonna run over to the, uh, I'm gonna run over to the, 
the more usual view, and we'll get one of these. I've got one here that I can whip up and talk to you about. So the LC6000 is a brand new uh, unit from, uh, from Denon DJ. And this is a controller. I mean, it's literally a controller. It's got nothing on the back other than a USB socket, a, a power socket that you won't need, uh, and a on-off socket. So it's literally a controller. It doesn't even have a sound card in it. That all it is all it does. But it's a very, very high quality controller. It's got you know, arguably the best jog wheels in the world on it. Uh, it's got the best controls. It's just a very, very, very professional, very nice controller. And so the question was, you know, is this always going to be just a controller? Is this always going to be something that you need to plug with something else? Why would you buy two of these in a mixer when you can buy a DDJ-1000 for uh, a lot less than two of these in a mixer? Well, because this is the most professional that you can get. A DDJ-1000 is a wonderful controller, but it's not quite professional. And if you want a modular system, then these are something that is going to be more appealing to you. So for instance, with Serato on your laptop, you could buy two of these, a Serato enabled mixer, and uh, you could plug all that together and have a, a proper separate system for DJing with Serato on, which you couldn't do beforehand without buying proper media players. I mean, these are proper media players I've got here. These are wonderful, but these cost a lot more, right? <laughs> these are not cheap. Uh, so you could, you know, although, yeah, this isn't cheap, um, a pair of these are going to cost you, what, 600 each, 700, 600 each, I think. That's 1,200. You get a mixer that works with Serato, get the Newmark Scratch for um, 500, but you could get a mixer that's got control over some of Serato's stuff as well if you wanted. For, you know, less than $2,000, you could have a proper separate system for DJing uh, with, with software, not only Serato, Virtual DJ, uh, Algorithms DJ, hopefully Tractor soon. Um, and that hasn't really existed before at that price point. So yes, I see what you're saying. A controller would be cheaper, but a lot of people would prefer full-size gear. Uh, really, the choice is yours. The point, I guess, is that the choice now exists, right? So um, lovely question. I enjoyed that, DJ Fubar. Thank you for asking. Hello, uh, Dr. Karen uh, and Technobeat. Uh, hello to Miles. Um, so um, DJ Fuzz says, greetings, Phil. I'm excited to be here and I'm stoked about the new Denon controller. It's done really well, the Denon controller. And, you know, I can always gauge how people are liking it. There's two things, three things people are saying about it. Uh, the first one is we want it to work with the Prime 4, which I agree it should work with the Prime 4. Why they made it work with Serato, but not their own hardware, I'm not really sure about that. Hopefully they'll do that soon. Uh, the second thing is it might just be a little bit expensive for a box. Um, and uh, I agree, I think maybe 100 cheaper would have been the right price point. It's my personal view of that. Uh, and the third thing is, why don't they make a motorized version? And they might just do, the one I've got here um, is a motorized, actually that isn't, I haven't set up the motorized one, but the motorized one is at the back, um, in the background there. Um, there is a motorized version of the current Denon DJ players. So would they make a motorized version of this one? Who knows? It's not beyond the realms. I want to say a big congratulations to DJ Kluby, who's just got his first booking for a wedding. Well done. Uh, and it's nice to see that people are getting bookings as well now. Uh, it's, it's just in some places. I know in other places, it's Brazil, India, and so on. You know, uh, it's the worst it's ever been. But in some places, it is starting to, to lessen up now and people are getting bookings, which is great. Hey, I've got some news for you before we go any further. Uh, we've launched a new DJ course today. You know, another day, another DJ course. But no, seriously, this is a big, big deal for us. Um, we've been trying to make a DJ course for this particular person for a long, long time. Uh, the DJ is DJ Angelo, uh, and the course is DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. So if you head to the Digital DJ Tips website, it's all over the site at the moment, as it should be for a course that's literally gone live in the last hour. Uh, this is a course for you if you like to play genres like hip hop and bass house and Latin and pop and funk and rock and R&B and you like to chop everything up in the same set. In other words, if you like to play a more open format style of DJing, DJ Angelo is known for having the skills to use wordplay and tone play and pitch play and to change BPMs and genres and to scratch over his sets and so on and do all that stuff to make those kind of open format DJ sets really, really exciting. Uh, and DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions is the course that teaches you how to do that. It's something that, uh, as I say, I've wanted to make for a long, long time. I've been kind of stalking Angelo for a long time to make this course. When we decided that we could, we wanted to do it together, I, you know, we, we, we worked out it was the right time. Um, COVID hit, so then we had the COVID delay. Uh, but we finally got together earlier this year and we recorded it. And a lot of hard work from the team 
this course is now out there. So it's, uh, it's live now, and if you're interested in it, you can go to djtips.co slash tricks and get this course with a $100 saving, but just for a little while, just in this literally small launch period. So don't hang about too long. You don't have to do it this second, but certainly do it this week. Um, yep, yeah, our new course, DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. Love to know what you think about it. Uh, it's uh, highly exciting to finally get it out there. We've had to keep it kind of under wraps for a long time and there's been an awful lot of work gone into it from everyone, not least Angelo, uh, who is a very hands-on tutor. Some people don't know uh, DJ Angelo has a background in training DJs both in person and online. He was one of the first people to put a YouTube scratch course up, for instance. Uh, so this is, a, this is the Digital DJ Tips complete Angelo course. We're very excited about it. Right, okay, so uh, I've told you about the course. Another thing to tick off my little list here. Let's grab another land, another big question. Uh, Voyager 1 is in opposite land. Does that mean you're in uh, the Southern Hemisphere down there in Australasia or something? I'd love to know, but welcome from Voyager 1 to Voyager, uh, to Voyager 1 in opposite land. Um, so Steve says, do you have a class on the Rain 1? Okay. The class we have that will teach you to use the RAIN 1 is our complete DJ course. It's like, when you ask a question like that, the question you're asking would be similar to this question. Uh, I want to learn to drive. Um, can you teach me in a insert car here? It's like, it doesn't matter what car you learn on. You know, once you can do it, you can do it. And so we don't make courses for individual controllers. The only time we've done that, the only one time we did that was for the Pioneer DJ, DDJ 1000, because they are so popular, so runaway popular with everyone. And they've got things they do differently from other controllers. The layout is more club layout. It's not a classic controller layout. And so many people asked us that we kind of caved in and did that one. But really, the best course for learning how to DJ is a course that teaches you how to DJ. And when you can do that, you can do it on anything. So Steve, have a look at our complete DJ course over on the DJ courses page of the website. Uh, and honestly, you know, this is, this is the way to learn. Uh, the beauty about it is that once you have, you'll be able to DJ on anything. And you see us using everything in this course. You don't see us using the Rain one because it wasn't out when we made it, uh, but you do see us using, you know, proper decks, decks that spin, decks that don't. Uh, you see us using uh, prop, Pro Pioneer gear, Pro Denon gear. You also see us using smaller controllers and so on. Um, but it really is all about the four big things that you need to DJ, which are two sources of music, a way of mixing between those two sources of music, a way of listening to one of them when the other one's being played to your audience, and a way of altering the speeds of those sources of music so that you can blend them together. And if you've got something that does that, and frankly, that will do that, then you can learn to DJ, then you can learn to manually beat mix, you can learn to assemble music, you can learn the techniques you need, you can learn how to handle yourself in front of a crowd, you can learn how to talk about what you do to people so they book you. You can do all the things you need, all the five big things, gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself that you need to DJ. So really don't think I need a course on this piece of gear or that piece of software. Think I need a course on DJ. Now we also have software courses, but they are more technical. They're more like the, a better way of learning what your software does than reading the manual. Uh, they won't teach you to DJ at all. Uh, so yeah, I'd, 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 I'd strongly encourage you to, to try and put the, the, the actual bit of kit you wanna learn about to one side and take a DJ course and then learn to DJ properly from the, from the bottom up that way, because you'll find that all the things you need are on your kit. They're certainly all on the Rain One. It's got everything on it that you need. Uh, next question is from, uh, I just wanna say hello to Kevin first, because Kevin's new here. We always like to say hello to new people. So Kevin on YouTube, welcome. Uh, hello to uh, someone who's definitely not new here, Paul, but it's great to have you. Uh, can you do vertical wave waveforms on the Denim players? Yes, you can. There's a button to do it on them. I haven't done it for so long, Yes, there definitely is, there definitely is. Um, yes, you can do vertical waveforms on the Denim. But I'm thinking now, you can do it on the Prime 4 for certain. I think you can do it on the media players. I'm pretty sure you can, but now you ask, I'm not so sure. 
Maybe if someone who's got one of these can just remind me, you know, I, the thing is I always forget this stuff because I don't use them for a couple of months and I forget what they can and can't do. Uh, can you do vertical waveforms on the Denon media players? Someone who's got one, tell us. Even Denon. Denon, will wa Denon DJ were watching on Tuesday when we did our broadcast with Layback Luke. Maybe they'll be here now. Uh, is the new Denon player connectable with Algorithms DJ AI? Says Doc. Yes, it is. You can, in fact, plug four of them in. Four of these new media players that you can see on the left-hand side there. Uh, along with a mixer and launch your phone, get Algorithm's phone app up and control the whole lot from your phone. Crazy, eh? Uh, but yes, you can do that. Hello, Gaming Authority in New Jersey. Uh, what camera mics do you like to use for podcasts, says Sai B. Well, as you can see, all kinds of stuff. In this studio, um, I'm actually not on that one at the moment. I'm on this one, which is a Rode uh, a little road mic. Uh, this is a Yeti uh, Blue, Blue Microphones Yeti. Uh, the camera I'm talking to you on now is a Logitech Stream Cam, which is a really nice little webcam, uh, just because my, my normal DSLR that I use there is somewhere else at the moment. Uh, but we use Sony DSLRs, the, a, the Alpha Series, Alpha 6, 6100, 6400, and 6500 we've got in the studio. Uh, so that's the cameras and mics we use. Uh, yeah, hope that helps. Uh, hello to Fergoot, who says, do you see Rekordbox in the future supporting export mode for streaming tracks that you have in your offline locker? No, not from the software. It might be a good idea, wouldn't it? But I think what's probably more likely to happen is uh, that they will um, enable streaming within the Pioneer CDJs. I've just got a feeling they can do it, but they haven't announced it. You know, they announced the new CDJ last year uh, and you'll be able to plug in Dropbox and your favorite streaming service directly on the player, I think. I don't know though, maybe it would be a good idea to be able to you know, prepare your sets with streaming stuff offline in software. Um, Prism Live is good software as well. Yeah, lots of people always tell me that. Uh, I should take a look at Prism Live. I'll write that down as well. So it's an alternative to, um, to uh, Larix Broadcaster, the one that I just showed you. Uh, for broadcasting from your phone. Uh, I don't know if Prism Live is on all systems. Larix is, you can use it on Android and on um, and on uh, iOS and also on Mac and Windows, I think. That's why I always recommend that one, because it's free and it works on everything. But yes, thank you for that. Uh, and yes, apparently you can. You press Shift, View, and you switch between horizontal and vertical. Shift and View, yes, thank you for the reminder there. So uh, Lashon says, as a DJ with CDJ 850s, uh, did I take a step backwards with the purchase of a DDJ-1000? Now I think I should have just bought a Pioneer mixer instead. Well, it depends. If you want to use software, if you want to use like Rekordbox and stuff, you're probably better off with a controller because it's got more controls for Rekordbox on it. Um, look, as I was just saying to our other, our other, um, our other reader, our other subscriber, Really, DJ gear is, is very personal and it all pretty much does the same thing. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, should I have bought a, Toy a Toyota or should I have gone for a Ford? Well, it's not an easy question to answer, is it? You know, how much did you need the money? Does your current model do everything you need it to do? Um, you know, they'll all get you from A to B, right? So I wouldn't worry too much, honestly, Lashon. You know, what you've got is great. Um, so, uh, hello, Alex, drinking Bonington Bitter even though he's in the same in the northeast of England, he's drinking bodies from Manchester. Uh, he says, my tractor control S3 is coming tomorrow. 325 pounds on eBay. Uh, well done. Yeah, we were talking about the tractor control S3 and it's bargain, it's bargain-ness, certainly in Europe. Uh, and that's a good price you got there. So awesome stuff. Um, the next live question uh, is from, oh, here's a good one. We get this one sometimes. Now, Tyler, someone who I know is getting really stuck into our DJ courses right now. And Tyler's question is, do you have any tips for time management and organization? You know, it's a question we get asked a lot. It is the num in fact, it's the number one question we get asked, actually. We did a survey, you know, what's the number one challenge in your DJ? And the number one answer was time. Uh, so let me give you some very, very simple tips on time, and then I'll give you somewhere to go if you really want to uh, get granular on this and fix it up so you can find more time for your DJing. Uh, so the first thing is uh, you need to uh, put time aside formally for DJing. So you need to decide how much um, you want to do, how many hours a week, uh, and you need to uh, put that time aside and you do it in your calendar. If you use an online calendar, uh, then that's great. Uh, if 
you don't, I'd recommend that you get one uh, because once you put it in your calendar, you can set up calendar reminders that can ping you when it's time to DJ and make you feel guilty when you're not doing it. You can also share your calendar with the people who matter to you. And so they know when you're DJing. So little and often, so put it in your calendar, little and often, much better to have an hour here and there or half an hour here and there even rather than a whole afternoon for lots of reasons that I won't go into, but that's a good, good way of thinking about it as well. Uh, and uh, also know what you're going to be practicing. And the way you do that is by setting goals. So you set a goal in your DJing that is something that scares you a bit, but you think you can achieve, and you put it in the future, not so far that you'll just not bother working towards it, but not so close that it's not big enough to be worth doing, right? So I always think thinking 90 day chunks is good. Set yourself a goal in about 90 days time. Uh, so that will determine what you do, because if you say, okay, 90 days, I'm going to play my first live stream or make a mixtape or play a gig for my family, then you've got to work out all the things that you need in order for that to happen and put them all into your DJ practice sessions in your calendar. Now you know what you're doing uh, and you just got to turn up and do it. So uh, there is a article that we wrote about this that will go into a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, um, detail about it. It's called How to Find Time to Learn DJing, Proven Method for Busy People. And if you scroll down on the website, it's one of the featured articles at the moment. Uh, and in this, uh, I give you uh, a special goal planning worksheet that you can download. Uh, and then I talk you through everything I just talked about, but in a lot more detail. So if you want to uh, get this, it's a free, basically it's free training. Uh, and a lot of people have followed this and a lot of people have loved this to help them. You know, there's no point having a hobby that you can't do, right? So because you haven't got time, you're not organized enough. So this is going to help you to get organized. So head over to the Digital DJ Tips website uh, from the homepage, scroll down to the featured articles. And it's currently the third featured article there on the right hand side, how to find time to learn DJing, proven method for busy people. Hope that helps. Uh, the next live question is um, from, uh, this is from, I'm just scanning, scanning, scanning. Uh, I'm new to DMX lighting, says DJ Skojo69. Uh, any tips or tricks you've got to offer? No, uh, other than uh, it's not as hard as you think. And actually there's a couple of books uh, that I can recommend you by a friend of mine. Uh, let me find them in, in our bookshelf here. There's the DJ in books. Where are they? Here they are. So I thoroughly recommend these two books here. Uh, they are Building a Lighting, a Mobile DJ Light Show. And this one here is uh, DMX for Mobile DJs. Building a Mobile DJ Light Show and DMX for Mobile DJs. Uh, you get both of these on Amazon. Uh, they're really good books by my friend Jordan uh, and he knows his stuff. So if you want to uh, get stuck into uh, the whole topic of lighting, I recommend these. And actually Jordan and me have been talking for a little while now about at some point making a course about this, but it hasn't come to anything, not least that he's in the USA where us Europeans are persona non gratis at the moment. So we can't, couldn't get there to do it even if we wanted to, but one day, Digital DJ Tips should have a course on lighting to help you to do that stuff. So our next live question, where's a good place to get a music subscription uh, for Serato DJ Pro? As I'm getting an S7 or an S9, but got no music. There are four places you can subscribe to that work with Serato. Tidal, which is great for everyday music. It's basically like Spotify. SoundCloud Go Plus, which is Again, got quite a lot of everyday music, but also good for all the stuff SoundCloud has that no one else does. And then the two Beatport owned services, Beatport Link and Beatsource Link. Beatport Link is for electronic music. Beatsource Link is open format. So they're your choices. The good news is you can get a one month trial of all of them. So try them all and see what works for you. Uh, but they are the four options you have with Serato, Andy. Now, if you just joined us, it is the Thursday Q&A live with me, Phil Morse, here at Digital DJ Tips. We're about halfway through. If you want to watch the replay, you can do, and you get all the answers to stuff that you've missed. Uh, if you want to ask questions, you can do, whether you're on YouTube uh, or anywhere else, just ask your questions. They're all coming through to me live here, and I will uh, try my hardest to answer them. If you enjoy this, please do subscribe to the channel, uh, follow us, click the share button as well. Share is really important to us to, to pay it forward. 
And uh, welcome if you've just joined us. You're late, but you've got another half hour to go, so that's cool. But what you have missed is that we've just launched a new DJ course. So for those people who've just joined us, uh, I'll tell you again quickly about it. It is DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. You can read about it on the homepage of the website right now. It is a course uh, for you if your music styles are R&B, hip hop, Latin, pump, uh, pop, funk, rock, bass music, you know, that kind of open format sound, but you wanna do it properly. You wanna do things like tone play and pitch play, word play, big tempo shift, scratching, and so on. Angelo is a viral sensation on YouTube, but also a great teacher, uh, and he's uh, well known for his energetic open format live sets all around the world. So you can click through there and get a special launch offer on this course uh, right now, DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions, our new DJ course. We're really excited about this one. We've wanted to make this for a long, long time. It does it contain uh, an awful lot of stuff that we've never taught before, uh, and it's huge. Uh, it's really, uh, really quite something. So take a look at this course. Uh, you can click through from the website, from the advert, or from the article to here, or you can just go straight to the link that I'm giving you on the screen now, uh, djtips.co slash tricks, and find out about this course. But do it now, because it's only just launched, and that means it's got an offer, which doesn't last forever. So my next uh, live uh, question uh, is from uh, is from DJ Farris, who just wanted uh, to, to confirm that app, it, that app. It's called Larix Broadcaster. I'll show you it. I'll show you its page on uh, on the internet. It's this uh, app here. You can get it for all platforms. Uh, get it for. Uh, iOS and Android. Oh no, you can't actually get it for Mac and PC. It is only a, a mobile one. Yeah, sorry, my mistake there. But you can get it for um, for all mobile platforms. That's the important thing. So it's called Larix Broadcaster. Um, on Mac and PC, you're going to use OBS, right? OBS is what everyone uses. Um, so my next question is from Stephen, who says, afternoon all. Afternoon to you, Stephen. I've got a question regarding iTunes and Rekordbox. As iTunes orders all the tracks into album folders, is there a short way to get rid of the album folders? Yeah, there is, you don't want that to happen. Now you can stop that happening by turning that off in the settings. You can say, do not organize my music for me in iTunes. And I actually recommend not even letting iTunes copy your music. Keep it in a folder away from iTunes. It will, iTunes will still work. Uh, but the way to get out of that, uh, well, the way I've done it before is quite old school and hardcore really. Uh, I just have a, a folder on my desktop or, an, a, or on my documents folder on my hard drive. I get all the tracks in my library showing in iTunes. I just highlight them all and I drag them into that folder then they'll all be copied across into a folder away from iTunes and then I just delete iTunes and put them all back again. Uh, or rather, put them back into iTunes but tell it not to copy them back in. Of course, if you've made playlists and stuff, you'll lose those that way. I don't actually know of any way of uh, getting iTunes to um, reject its file structure once you've told it to work like that without, while preserving your playlist. But I know a man who does which is Mixmaster G, who's here today. So Stephen is on YouTube, Mixmaster G. If you uh, know whether that's possible, even if it is, uh, maybe, uh, and you've, your typing fingers are feeling warm, maybe you could help Stephen there. Uh, but yeah, in iTunes, you've got to be very careful about what you allow it to do in order to not have it over-organize over your life. Um, so uh, DJ Smidzy, any recommendations on setting up OBS with limiter and compressor, especially when you use an external audio card? No, it's hard to explain that stuff here. Uh, basically, you, you, it's hard to explain that stuff here. I mean, you can set it up. There'll be lots of stuff on YouTube about setting up the limiter and compressor, and it doesn't matter what audio cards you're using. Uh, basically, you, you, you don't want to go too far to town on them. Uh, and listen to the results. See if you like what they're doing for you. Um, so the next live question is from uh, Adam. Adam's a lucky lad. I may be coming into a substantial amount of money in the near future. I've been a digital DJ for 10 years now. I'm torn between, between upgrading to a full CDJ 3000 setup or going for an XDJ. Uh, I don't play any clubs or get any gigs generally. Well, I would like to get used to using CDJs though. Do you think it's worth going all out or should I just go for the XDJs considering I'm not gonna be playing in a club setting for a while at least? Right, either go for one of these two things. You know, if you're coming into a substantial amount of money and money's no object and you want the CDJs, go for them, but you're spending multiple times more than you need for, what, for the functionality. 
Uh, don't bother with XDJs. Um, just go, because they're just a stripped down CDJ, by the way, if people don't know that. Uh, instead, go for a DDJ-1000, a Pioneer DDJ-1000, simple. Uh, for just over $1,000, you're getting something that looks and feels like CDJs. It's going to work with Rekordbox software, which is the same software you'll use to prepare your music for CDJs. Uh, and it's it's got everything you need on it. Or if you like the idea of not having a laptop, go for the XDJ XZ or XZ, uh, which is uh, very close to using Pioneer CDJs. Uh, it's a little bit underpowered and I suspect they'll replace it in the next 18 months to two years with something better, but um, go for the XDJ XZ. Um, either of those, DDJ1000, XDJ XZ or XZ, uh, but don't go for the XDJs. Um, in my opinion, you're better off going for a controller. Um, but if you want the CDJ3000, there's actually someone in this building here who, um, uh, when people, we're in, the, we're in a world trade center here in Gibraltar, right? So it's quite a big building. And when people in the building discover that I am uh, here, uh, who DJ, they tend to kind of make a beeline for that door there. So um, someone uh, popped into my office the other day and uh, for him, money's no object. And he had some CDJ2000 and he said, should I upgrade to the 3000s? And I'm like, dude, you don't really need to. Why do you want to? And he really have the best reason why. He didn't really know why. Anyway, he just did it. But for him, money's no object, so why not? Um, so, uh, so cool. So I hope that helped. Um, so, right, okay. Dr. Karen has just given me a chance to repeat something to you all, which I have to do every now and then. There's no question too, as we would say in the UK, daft. There's no question too silly. There's no question too beginner. There's no question too advanced. There's no question too boring. There's no question that makes you look silly. Uh, I'm here to help and if I can't help, my team will help you afterwards in the comments if I don't want to answer it live for you. So Dr. Karen, your question is not uh, something you should be embarrassed about. Uh, Dr. Karen says, after doing an exhaustive search, it seems there isn't an answer out there. I thought it would be a simple and easy thing. So here's the question. I was trying to connect my DDJ SB2 controller to my M Audio BX5 speakers through a Scarlett 2i2. I was trying to get everything set up for, for production and DJing without unplugging things. So I don't know off the top of my, um, and it's not a stupid question by the way, it's a, it's a pretty involved question. Um, so I don't know uh, off the top of my head what the Scarlett 2i2's inputs and outputs are. So I'm looking at those now. Um, it's, I'm gonna guess a two in, two out uh, device, which means that, it ought to have two audio outputs on it. And you can probably route the input audio to those outputs, but what you're likely to find is that there'll be a very slight audio delay when you do that. Um, without actually getting one in the studio and messing around with it, I can't be sure about that. There's definitely a, normally a loopback feature on audio interfaces. The one we're using under the desk now is a iRig stream, and that definitely does it. So I can send back to the iRig stream any audio that I'm sending into it, and then I can plug speakers into it. But for me, I'll be looking around the back of the uh, audio interface and seeing what else is there. Is there a headphones output you could maybe use? You basically got a left and right line output on the back. But again, it's whether you can route the audio to it and whether there'll be a slight delay in the audio routed to it. If it was me, I would just get a tiny, unless you could do it, of course, which should, and it works, which would be great. I'll just get a tiny mixer, like a little one of the little Yamaha six channel mixers. It's about the size of your hand. Plug into that first and then out of that into your Scarlet and out of that again into your speakers. Uh, but it's a great question, not a silly question at all. Um, another thing you could do, if it's going from your audio interface into your computer, is plug your speakers into the headphones out on your computer uh, and uh, feed the audio from the Scarlett to the headphones out. Uh, I don't know whether that would work. Again, you might have an audio delay. There's lots of hacks, lots of things you could try, uh, but not a silly question at all, Dr. Karen. It's quite a techie question, really. Uh, and I guess other people might have other um, answers for you. So keep an eye on the comments. Dr. Karen was on Facebook, by the way, if you want to go and chat about that there. Um, so um, the next live question uh, is for um, a lot of you just agreeing that, yeah, if you want a pro setup, you've got to go for separates, uh, not a controller. So that's kind of a point of difference between uh, what we've been talking about here today. The Den and DJ uh, LC6000 on the left-hand side there. Um, and, uh, you know, a controller. 
Um, so Victor says, Pioneer DDJ 400 or the Hercules Impulse 500 for beginner DJ controller. It's like these questions are literally being seeded uh, and they're not because uh, on the website, literally just a couple of days ago, uh, we posted a post that helps you about this. Five best DJ controllers under $500. And our number one recommendation is actually the Hercules controller you mentioned, uh, but it is a special edition of that. Uh, which comes with Serato, which suddenly makes it pretty good value if you can live with the gold color of it. Uh, the Tractor Control S3 in the States, it goes a little bit over the $500 mark normally, but in, the, in Europe, you can get it, as we found out earlier, for about £300, which is about $400. Uh, the Mixed Track Platinum FX is a great controller for Serato. Uh, the Pioneer DDJ400, there you go. Uh, again, a great controller for record box and your only choice at this price point. All the DDJ SB3, bit old, but still does the job for Serato. So there's some beginner controllers, but to answer your question directly, Pioneer DDJ 400 or Hercules Impulse 500, depends on what software you want. If you want record box, you're gonna have to go for the Pioneer. If you want Serato, the Hercules. So choose your software and your controller will follow. Right, people, it's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio with our live Thursday q and I just want to check on Mixcloud because uh, we don't get the Mixcloud comments through on the screen. So hello to all our Mixcloud people, to Martin, uh, who says, after 25 years away, I didn't intend to play out as this was to keep me occupied in lockdown, but I got asked by some friends to play a private garden party in the summer. Uh, and uh, I couldn't help but say yes. It will be my first gig after 26 years years. Wow. Good luck with that, Martin. I'd love to hear how you get on. Uh, hi to Russell on, uh, on uh, Mixcloud. He says, uh, it's always a pleasure having you on the stream. Uh, and hi to Jimmy over there on Mixcloud as well. Uh, right, let's pull our next question up then. So uh, Adam is just talking to, uh, sorry, Sean is talking to Adam about what to buy, saying I was in the same position financially and I went for the XDJ XZ as I don't feel a need for a full club setup for home or small gigs and it's got all you need. There you go, another thumbs up for my idea of not going for the full setup there. DJ Roadrunner says, Hi Phil, I'm looking to get the Pioneer DJ S7 mixer or the S9 mixer. Uh, right, let's talk about the S7 mixer because I've actually got one here, so I'll pull the mixer down uh, while we talk about it. Uh, not sure about which one to go for was your question. All uh, right, so this is the uh, S7, the S7 uh, mixer, yep, yeah. sorry, the S9. Oh look, it's got some white powder on it. <sighs> DJ mixer with white powder on it, whatever next. Uh, it's, it's the DJM S9. Um, <laughs> Phil, rewind. This is the S7. Right, so Pioneer, I was trying to make things easier for you then and I probably made them harder. Pioneer had the S9 and they've replaced it with two mixers, the S7, this one, and the S11, which has got a screen on it here, which are roughly compatible, uh, roughly rather um, comparable to the two mixers from, uh, from uh, Rain that do the same thing. So your question is, which one should you go for? Well, these are scratch mixes uh, and they're both awesome. But let's talk through why you're probably best off going for the DJM S7, the new one. Um, so the reason I'd recommend the new one is it's just leapt forward in lots and lots of ways over the S9. It's got a better, easier club layout. It's got much better effects. The pads work independently, independently left and right. So in the old one, you couldn't have like, loop roll on the left hand pads and slicer on the right hand pads, all that's been fixed. Uh, so for those reasons alone, and the fact that the DDJ S7 is actually $100 cheaper than the S9, uh, I would certainly recommend going for the DDJ S7 um, rather than the older S9. Mo says, have you tried to use Serato uh, with the new M1 chip and Big Saw? No, because we don't have an M1 uh, Mac here, but everyone I know who has has said it, it's, it works fine, so that's cool. Um, Michael says, I was really excited for, uh, for this, for the Prime 4. Again, we're talking about the the unit uh, there in the bottom, in the left of the picture, the LC6000 from Denon. And then I started thinking that if this becomes enabled for that, wouldn't they also enable the Prime 4 layer deck controls for full SC decks too? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, but I don't know the answer to that, Michael. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, they haven't been committal at all on whether they're going to make the LC6000 work for the Prime 4, so maybe, maybe there's a technical reason why it can't happen. Um, and Kimon says, uh, do you think having separates is better than having a full controller? We're talking about this a lot today, aren't we? Um, 
Uh, if the full controller has a fault, then the whole unit has to go in. Well, that's why the separates, like we've got set up on the desk here today, this is more like a pro option because again, it's modular, you can swap things out and so on. Uh, so it's just more professional, so it depends. Uh, if it's mission critical, probably best having separates. Uh, certainly you wouldn't catch clubs with DJ controllers in them, but for everyone else, DJ controllers are such a great way of getting the same functionality at a fraction of the price. So uh, let's move on to the next one. I'm loving this today. Thank you for being part of it, people. And if you do enjoy these, follow us, subscribe, click the bell, click share. Please click share. That's what we like the most of all uh, and show your love for them. Uh, so this is from Edward who says, is the Reloop ready, fully functional with DJI AI on iOS and Mac? Have you tried? So this is the Reloop ready. The Reloop ready is a really cute little controller that functions with the uh, primarily with Serato, which is what it's made for, but it also works absolutely fine with Algorithms DJ Pro AI, and that's confirmed. While they have got a unit for Algorithms DJ Pro AI, the Relu Buddy, which has got this slot at the top here, so you can actually plug in an iPad and have it kind of like this, which is nice. Uh, well, they do have one for that, uh, which has got the advantage of having the, uh, the controls for the AI functions of the software kind of built into it, so it does make it a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, you can also use the, the new Reloop uh, ready for that as well, uh, and I can confirm that for you. So uh, when do you think, oh, lots of you are asking about the Reloop Ready as well, when do you think it'll be available for purchase? I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, light and easy to carry around when you're legally blind like I am. Uh, Michael, I think it's next month it's going to be available. Um, as far as I know, next month is the month for that. Uh, so Driver John says, I use separate controller and mixer because I still love to play my vinyl records alongside my digital uh, collection. DJ99 has got no complaints going from Serato to Denon Engine Go. Uh, the Prime 4 is a real beauty, uh, so thank you for that. Um, so we've just been talking about the DJ Angelo course that we just launched, by the way, people. So if you didn't uh, hear about that, it's a brand new course uh, we've made with DJ Angelo, especially for you if you like playing multi-genre, multi-BPM sets, or you want to learn how to do it, especially if you play hip hop, if you play Latin and pop and funk and rock and bass and all those open format styles, uh, and you want to learn to do it really well. Angelo is the renowned master of this stuff. He's a great tutor, a great guy. I've wanted to make this course with him for a long, long time. So just head over to the URL I'm putting on the screen now, uh, djtips.co slash tricks. You'll land on this page here where you can learn all about this course from DJ Angelo. And not only that, you'll be able to get it at a special launch discount. Uh, so for those of you asking about that, that is uh, where you find out more about it. And uh, Adrian says, talking of DJ Angelo, uh, I'm just setting up my studio again after a house move. It's time to learn to scratch after 30 years DJing, lol, making the most of, break, of lockdown. Angelo's actually a really accomplished scratch DJ, but this course we've made with him, it doesn't. you don't need to be able to scratch to take it. Uh, you just need to learn some very basic scratches in order to do some really amazing stuff uh, because it's about word play and tone play and pitch play and big BPM and genre changes, as well as baby scratch, transformer scratch, cut scratch, and the stuff which you can pick up reasonably quickly and it just sounds awesome. Uh, so with 20% of the effort, you get 80% of the, uh, the liking nods from your audience with the stuff that Angelo teaches you about scratching in his new course. It's awesome, we love making it, we had a lot of fun making it. So um, Sai says, instead of the Denon goodies, could I go for a pair of decent record decks and mixer uh, with Serato? Uh, then I have a new with old setup. Well, yeah, you could, and Scratch DJs like that stuff. To me, record buying record decks now is a is a retro move, uh, unless you want to learn Scratch DJing with timecode vinyl. And for the same price as record decks, you can get these new players that we've been talking about today. Uh, and you know, I just think putting a needle on a record and then it goes to the end, and you've got to pick it up and put it on again, and it's just it's all a bit. I don't, I don't get it. You know, why not just use media players or? controllers like these. Or if you want the spinning thing, uh, use the Rain 12s, which are the best deck if you want something that feels more like turntables. Unless you want to play music, of course, in which case obviously turntables are a good thing to have because you can also control your digital stuff with it using DVS. Um, so Frederick is very happy with his CDJ 3000, so there we go. And I vote for the CDJ 3000 just to make it harder for Adam to decide. Um, so, uh, 
One or two more questions. Um, so uh, Rob says, I'm a current student of your full DJ course. Do you plan to create a complete wedding course? Well, we actually have two wedding courses already. Uh, so the first wedding course we have uh, is our mobile DJ blueprint, which is uh, to helps you to set up a wedding DJ business uh, and, and everything you need to do that is in there. So you can head to DJ Courses and scroll down uh, to the new mobile DJ Blueprint and learn about that one. We also have a kind of more tutor-led wedding course that's especially for uh, people in the USA who wanna go full-time uh, learning to wedding DJ, but it's tutor-led and it's currently not available because of lockdown. The tutor is uh, my friend and one of the best wedding DJs in the world. Uh, Jason Janai in the USA, you know, he's done Super Bowl after parties and Beyonce's parties and this kind of thing. Um, but Jason is like any wedding DJ, scrabbling around, uh, you know, trying to get out of this uh, catastrophe that's hit the wedding DJ world. Uh, and, uh, you know, now's not a good time to be running another edition of that course with him. Uh, but Jason Janai's wedding course with us will come back at some point in some form. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, have a look at our mobile DJ blueprint course. Um, I hope that would be helpful to you, Rob. Uh, the next live question uh, is Peter just thanking me on Twitch. Hello, Twitch people, by the way. I know we neglect you. I know we neglect you. I'm not going to offer any excuses, but thank you for being with us. Um, he says, thank you for the video on the Reloop Ready. I'm very excited to get one. Do you know when it's supposed to be released? No, it's still on pre-order, unfortunately. Uh, Oscar D says, it's great to hear about the DJ Angelo course. I'm open to playing new genres, so it really appeals to me. Look, the last three mixing courses we launched were Layback Luke, EDM, James Hype, Tech House, House Mixing Mastery, says it on the cover, right? House. So there's a lot of EDM, electronic and house there and we haven't given love to what I call open format, what Angelo calls creative performance DJing, R&B, hip hop, funk, rock even, pop, Latin, all these awesome genres that we haven't had a course specifically to teach you how to DJ until now. And that's what DJ Angelo's course does, it's awesome. Uh, djtips.co slash tricks if you wanna learn more about this course. We launched it today, um, have a look at it now. Um, so uh, the kill shot experience is a great question. What do you recommend to keep new DJs motivated and not getting frustrated? I recommend you do two things. The first thing, get yourself a copy of this, it's free. You don't need to buy it. Uh, I don't want you to buy it. I want you to go there and get it for free because uh, I'll give you a PDF of this for free when you go there. Uh, and you can download it, you can print it out. If you uh, print it small and double-sided, please, so I don't you spoiling the planet if you don't have to. Or you can print it out and there you've got my book on how to DJ. It'll talk you through the five big areas. But even better than that, um, and you'll do it in a structured way so you won't get frustrated. But even better than that, over on the website, uh, you, can, uh, you can read the whole book without even joining Digital DJ Tips. So if you wanna have a look at the book, head over to the website, click the book at the top, and it'll take you to a page where you can look through the whole book. And the beauty about this version of the book is that we've got all the videos and stuff that in the book are just links. Uh, they're all here. So you can see, uh, you can see uh, and follow along with how to do the very early transitions that you need to become a DJ. Uh, this book is written purely for beginners uh, and I really recommend the book as a first stop. Uh, and then if you're serious about it, get one of the courses, get the complete DJ course, because again, it's short lessons that will talk you through and, and you'll build on everything, build on what you learned last time, build on what you learned last time, and you'll learn all the skills properly from the ground up without getting frustrated. Manual beat mixing is right there at the beginning because it's such an obvious skill in DJing that people neglect nowadays and you need. Um, and then it moves on from manual beat mixing and the stuff anyone can do to the stuff that you can only do on digital gear. And then it moves on to performing. It's got stuff about music, building a library and all that kind of stuff. So do have a look at that course if you're serious about it. Uh, but the kill shot, uh, go and look at the book. It's free, follow it, do a page a day and I guarantee you, you'll start to see DJing in a different light and you won't be quite so frustrated as you learn. Um, Right, um, Oliver says, good to see that you're healthy, Phil. Um, I'm a bit paranoid at the moment. Uh, lots of people are saying, Phil, you're looking healthy, or Phil, you're looking tired. Have a, uh, have a break or anything in between. But anyway, Oliver's saying I'm looking healthy, so that's good. It's just the fact that we're talking about it, I think. Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, Oliver then goes on to say, great work that you do. I was wondering, what do you recommend for a controller after the DDJ400? Right, so we were just talking about 
the, the control is in the beginner range, right below $500. So I would say you'd move up from the DDJ400 from Pioneer to either the DDJ800 or the DDJ1000. 800 if you're happy with two decks, many people are. 1000 if you really must have the four decks. Uh, either would be a great step up. Don't look for anything else around that price. Don't move up to the FLX6 or the Flex6, which is, it's, it looks better, but honestly, spend, spend a bit more and get the, the 800 or the 1000. It was my advice to you, Oliver. Uh, in Germany, hello Oliver in Germany. Um, so DJ2AM says, hey Phil, have you considered creating a subscription-based model for your courses alongside the option to buy them individually? Yeah, we have, and we actually, a lot of people don't know this, but we actually do have a subscription course. Um, it, is, uh, it is our um, Digital DJ Lab program, uh, which you'll find at the bottom of our mixing page, uh, right at the very bottom, here it is, Digital DJ Lab. Uh, this is really for pro DJs, it's a, it's a way to keep up to date with what's going on in DJing. Um, when you've already done a course or two and you feel like, uh, you know, you need to learn stuff that the courses couldn't touch on because they'd just be blinking massive. Um, Digital DJ Lab is full of mixed deconstructions where we take a famous or really good mix uh, by a DJ uh, that we found out there and we show you how to do it. It's also full of all the kind of things you're seeing now, you know, um, little mini lessons on stuff that maybe isn't covered in the courses. Uh, so, uh, it's worth having a look. Um, what I would say is, you know, my, my, my sales team would say, Phil, shut up, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. What I would say is, uh, wait until we put this on offer. We're regularly putting this on offer and you can get a look at Digital DJ Lab for like a dollar for a month. Um, and if you like it, stay subscribed. Um, but yeah, putting all our courses on subscription, you know, we might do it at some point. Um, it's certainly not on our roadmap anytime in the near future. Um, it works kind of how it works now. Um, so apparently on the SC line, you can't have vertical waveforms, says Michael, so there we go. Right, um, so James, this question comes up every week. Have you heard of any rumors of Pioneer releasing any new gear this year, in particular controllers? No, we haven't, but they do play their cards close to their chest, so uh, who knows? Bobby, does the mixed track Platinum FX work with anything on Android? I don't know the answer to that, Bobby, I'm afraid. If anyone does, uh, Bobby's on, uh, Bobby is on YouTube and you can help Bobby out there. Uh, and Mixmaster G is uh, agreeing with me that Pioneer are very closed uh, and that even if they're not, those that know can't tell. Uh, what's the price of that LC6000? $600 uh, is the answer to that one. Uh, so final question for today, because we're running out of time. Sean, if you were playing a gig and you knew the majority of the crowd were DJs, would you be more nervous than playing to Joe Public? Or would you think it was a good test and up your game? I would do neither. I would forget about the DJs uh, and play to the people in the room who want to dance. Uh, the majority of the crowd are never DJs. Uh, the majority of the crowd are always normal people. Um, I would ignore the DJs because the DJs, it doesn't matter whether you play a simple set or a really complex set, or you do amazing tricks, or you mess up lots, or you do it flawlessly. The DJs don't care about that. They just wish they were you in that DJ booth right there. And nothing you do can make them think anything differently. So don't try and impress the DJs. Try and keep the dance floor busy and happy. And if you do that job, that is the best way of telling those DJs you've got a right to be in that DJ booth. And DJing is 90, if not 95% about music selection. So get the music right, and we talk about it a lot in the book, get the music right, get your set planned, not planned down to every transition, but get the right music in a folder or in a playlist so that you've got your hands close to all the stuff you're likely to need. Um, watch the crowd properly, program that music well, and don't worry about the other DJs in the room because everyone else will have a great night and that is the best thing you can do to show them you deserve to be in that DJ booth. Right, that's it for today, people. One more final uh, reminder that our brand new course with DJ Angelo uh, teaching you to play hip hop and R&B and funk and all the genres that we have not got a mixing course teaching you to play, teaching you to play multi-genre, DJ sets is now out. Uh, it's awesome, I'd like you to take a look at it. Go to djtips.co slash tricks. When you get there, uh, you'll go to a page that explains it all, all to you and shows you a video, five minute video with exactly what's in the course. I'd love you to watch that video and I'd love you to do it today because it's currently 
just been launched and it is on a special launch discount. So you can save money if you get it today or certainly this week. Uh, right, that's it for today. Um, I'm back on Sunday at exactly this time. Look at your watch. I will be, if I can get a 4G connection uh, at least, I'll be DJing from somewhere, uh, somewhere hopefully very picturesque um, in, uh, in Andalusia. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, I've got a real mixed bag of music for you on Sunday. We're going to go everywhere. Uh, so join me for that. I'm back next week for another Thursday Q&A live and next Tuesday at uh, uh, the same time, 4 p.m. London, 11 a.m. Eastern for another Tuesday Tips live. And do come in for Tuesday Tips because we had laid back Luke on this one last week. Um, you know, I do sometimes uh, pull guests in uh, to help me out with them. So who knows what will happen this time. But uh, another Tuesday Tips industry industry talk on uh, on um, uh, Tuesday next week. So we're done. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for being here. Uh, please do hit those like buttons. Please do hit share if you're feeling extraordinarily generous. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's saying thank you. Diane and Dr. Karen and Sean and DJ99 and everyone else. Uh, except DJ Joe Blaze, who's very, very angry. Or maybe you're just upset that we're finishing Joe Blaze. I'll, I'll go for the fact that you're upset we're finishing. I hope so anyway. Uh, right, we're done, folks. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you again next time. Uh, until then, bye-bye. <laughs>